Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to, I would say switching gears, but switching gears, I would think, uh, implies that we're not going to, you know, come back to a previous thing. Maybe it does. I don't know. We're going to be talking about some C-sharp in this video and uh, WPF and how to create. And, well, this is probably going to be an ongoing series. It's going to take multiple videos, I would assume. Um to definitely go over the basics at least, but uh, we're going to be talking about how to create a console application with C-sharp and WPF, and I think it's a really cool um, framework, and I actually just started working with it since last summer, so this is fairly new to me, uh, but I thought it would be cool for other people to start getting a grasp of. Um, so once again, I am not an expert by any means, but uh, I think making this videos will keep me constantly learning too, which is awesome. Um, so we're going to definitely go back to Python um, and other videos. I just wanted to kind of switch it up a little bit. But anyway, if you don't already, download Visual Studio. You will need this. Um, if you're on Windows, it won't be too hard. I think they have it for Mac, too. I, I really don't know. Yeah, it, it obviously says right here. So you should be good. Um, I don't really know how it runs without the .NET, using .NET. I don't know. I don't I don't really know anything about it. Uh, but I'm on Windows, so I don't really care. And uh, just go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and get the community version. That is free for individual developers, academic use, and open source. Professional, it's actually pretty expensive. Um, and Enterprise is, is very expensive, too. I forget the price, but what the heck? I don't want that. I didn't mean to download that. Because <laughs> um, I already have Visual Studio. It's right here. This is the symbol for it. I know professional and uh, what's the other one? I, I forget already. Enterprise are both fairly expensive. So once you have that downloaded, it'll be a pretty big package. You can um, search Visual Studio down here and look for the installer. This is where we go and install different frameworks and uh, different ways to build different applications pretty much. Oh, I need to update it. That's perfect. Hopefully this doesn't take very long. It doesn't look like it. Oh. Okay, I'll probably just cut this out. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Okay, so now that the installer updated, um, you'll see Visual Studio Community if you have all that already installed. And then what we can do is we can get a more, and uh, if you start up Visual Studio, it'll actually bring you, for the first time, it'll bring you to this anyway. But we can hit Modify here, and it will allow us to choose different things that we want to download. So, uh, for instance, for this example, you're going to want this .NET desktop development. So build WPF is what we're going to be using. Um, Windows Presentation Foundation is what that stands for, and that's what we're going to be using to create our app. So I don't know how much this actually... Okay, it's almost a gig. Um, so that'll take a little long longer to download, but once you have that installed, you will be ready to go. So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio, I have Visual Studio 19, and let's create a new project down here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click WPF app.net framework, and I'm not going <laughs> to, I didn't know you could use Python. Let's use C Sharp. Um, so, oh, this is, okay, this is just a recent project template. But anyway, we're going to be using C Sharp, and we are going to look for... Uh, let's just type WPF up here. So this is Visual Basic. We don't want to write in Visual Basic. We want C Sharp. So let's do this one right here. Um, Windows Presentation Foundation Client Application WPF.NET Framework. We are not going to use .NET Core. Um, let's use the .NET Framework. So let's go ahead and hit Next. Here you can name your app whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to call this YouTube Demo and go ahead and create it from here. Here it'll just create like a basic hello world-ish um, product for you. So uh, now this we have, oh, we have the little designer here. And me personally, you know, you can, you can uh, cr like arrange this however you like, but I like to do this vertical split. I like to have the window on one side and you can swap them if you want. Uh, but I like to have the window on one side and the code in the other. If you like it up and down, you can do this. Uh, it's really just personal preference. And if you don't see this when you're on main window.saml, 
um, try hitting this collapse pane. Uh, that might that might fix your issue. But anyway, right here is where we are going to uh, write our XAML, which stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. I think that's what it's called. Let me make sure. Let me validate that. Stands for what? Extensible Application Markup Language. Yes. Um, so pretty much it's just XML uh, for this particular uh, WPF application. That's what they use. Um, so it's kind of like HTML in a way that it has beginning and ending tags, or opening and closing tags, uh, in that in that sense. So right now we just have a basic uh, window, and then each, if you go to the Solution Explorer over here, um, we have main window .xaml. So here is what we're looking at, and then each uh, page is actually going to have some code behind. So it's going to have some C sharp behind it. And right now it's not doing anything. Um, the C sharp. Let's we can switch back and forth up here between the C sharp and the XAML. Let's go ahead and hit start, and you'll see the application up here in front of you. Here it is. So that is our application. You get little information like how much memory it's using, and how much of your processor it's using. It's kind of cool. If you don't see this, I think you can go to view and uh, it should be here, it's Diagnostic Tools. There's a lot of things. Maybe it's in here. I don't know, there's so much things that I haven't learned about Visual Studio um, <coughs> that, you know, I probably should take a look at all of these different settings that I can enable. But anyway, um, so whenever we make a change in here, uh, let's say we just make a label, and it's going to say hi there. We can see it up here, which is really nice. We don't have to continuously hit run and see our changes. Uh, we can just see it live here uh, in this window. Um, so yeah, I will go ahead and show you how we can start making our first application. So if we want, what do I want it to do? Let's go ahead and make a label. Let's make a label and let's call or not let's call it let's write into it um, what is your name All right so we see this and uh, as we continue to add XAML um, whatever we put below this is just going to appear underneath whoops yeah when you have something that it can't compile it'll just go blank um, so it kind of stacks and there's actually a tag called a stack panel. So what this does is anything inside of it, I'll cut and paste that, anything inside of this will just stack up on to each other. Um, and you can do it, you can do it different ways. You can do orientation and vertical or orientation horizontal. Let me show you how that works. So let's copy this label and let's put multiple of them. So we're doing vertical now, and you can see that they go up and down. All right, let me zoom in a little bit for you guys so you can see it better. So you can see right now they go up and down as it stacks in the stack panel. Right? If we change this to horizontal, though, you can see that it actually stacks, but it stacks in a different way. It stacks side to side. So you can use that with however you're wanting to design something. So if you wanted to, um, make some kind of navigation bar, right? We can change the height of this. Let's make it uh, 200 pixels or something like that. Um, if we wanted to, we can make a nav bar like this. We can have different buttons in here and uh, have it go horizontally. That isn't probably preferred, um, but if we wanted to, we could definitely do that. If we do vertical alignment, that aligns it however we say vertically. So you can see I did top, so that pushes everything to the top. If I do vertical alignment bottom, you can see it now goes to the bottom. And you can also center it, and that's how it was before I added vertical alignment tag, uh, or attribute I guess. It made it in the center. Okay, so we have a stack panel, which we're adding things to, and notice how we put the stack panel in a grid. A grid is another container uh, object, if you will, 
and you can only have one parent container in the window tag. You can only have one at a time. So notice if I put stack panel here, and I put something here, it's going to freak out because this is now the first one, and it sees this grid container. It says, wait, you can only have one parent container uh, as the main one. But what's cool is you can add multiple containers in the first container. So if I put another stack panel here, it's not going to freak out. All right, we can have two stack panels. Let's go ahead and copy and paste that. So you can see this one's vertical uh, by default, and this one here is horizontal. And what's nice is when you click on one, it'll actually um, put a border around what you're clicking. So that's pretty neat. So we know a little bit about stack panels. Of course, a lot of this is me showing you uh, how stuff works, and then it's probably going to be pretty heavily reliant on you just playing around with it and getting a feel for it, because that's exactly how I kind of learned. I just kind of played around with it. You know, HTML is the same way. HTML, I feel like it's not something you just can watch and pick it up. You also got to kind of play around with it and, and experiment and learn that way. So <clears throat> we have a grid and inside of it, let's go ahead and make a starter application. I don't know how long we're in this already. Okay, we're already in 13 minutes. So why don't you play around with the stack panel and labels. I'm going to end the video here, and in the next one we're going to add different things into our main window. And, uh, well, I guess the 13 minutes part of that was me updating, but that's okay. In the next video we're going to add different things to this application um, and uh, work with some of the code behind in C-sharp. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoy this this little series and uh, I really enjoy working with WPF because you can make some really cool applications with it and before I ever worked with it I had no idea how to write uh, any kind of desktop applications at all other than console applications that was the only other desktop quote unquote desktop application I have ever written so this is a really cool take on how you can write a desktop application really neat Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video when we talk about adding different controls in here and uh, working with it with the code behind and kind of manipulating it in a way. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.